Hi, welcome to Apollo Career Center podcast. Today we have Dre and Coach Benda from Sports Exercise, and let's get started. The first one is, Coach, why did you come to Apollo and why did you want to teach in this field? Apollo was always in my sights. I've been a longtime athletic trainer and, and working in industry for over 30 years. And uh, I always thought that as I aged on the sideline as an athletic trainer, I wanted to give back. And Apollo was the perfect spot. Um, here at Apollo, I could use my athletic training, my physical therapy, my exercise background um, in the classroom. And that's why I was very um, excited when the position opened up. So I left teaching and I left athletic training working in the trenches to come here and, and work at Apollo. And I've loved it ever since. And then, Dre, why did you come to Apollo for sports? So, honestly, I knew from a young age that one of the things that I wanted to do when I was older was I wanted to help people. And when I was looking at programs in Apollo, originally I wasn't even going to come because they didn't have a program that stood out to me. But when I saw that there was a health field and sports fitness specifically, I knew that that would be perfect for helping people because you come out of sports fitness and you get your PTAC and you can go straight into being a healthcare assistant or a therapist or a chiropractor so yeah. so what's like an everyday setting in your lab like what do you guys do every day well it's a little bit different from our first year to what Dre's doing our first year program um, we like to run our classroom just like a business that um, from right off the bat from the first time our students come in um, they they learn employability skills and I always say um, when the phone rings, I can't, as an educator, just stop what I'm doing because we we have people, we have tours, we have the phone ringing, we have all this stuff doing. So, so somebody else has to answer the phone. Um, somebody comes in for a tour, and we have a marketing division that they learn how to greet someone and bring them in and talk about our program early, early on. Um, that's in career tech. What I think is different than a brick and mortar school is we try and bring industry into the classroom and we learn a little bit different, just like you're doing here and putting on this podcast. Um, I think students dive into learning better when it's hands on and we can give value to what they're doing right off the bat rather than saying, oh, here's a textbook, Dre. Why don't you read chapter one and then write down all the bold printed words and then we're going to have a test next week. And with that, I remember when Dre came in for one of our tours and wondering to decide, should I, should I be in health science or should I be in sports exercise science? But just being able to talk to her about that and just go over how we learn a little bit different. But back to your original question, our classes run like a business. And, it, and as soon as our students get those skills and can apply those skills and we can do um, applications with that and learn that way, that's what you will see in our classroom. Because I know a lot of people thought like health science and sports fitness were like the same thing, mm -hmm. but like you would work with sports more in sports fitness. Would you say that would be like the same thing, kind of? We tend to a little bit. We look at our um, classes. Sports exercise science is very, very broad. And as Dre said, you know, chiropractic, physical therapy, athletic training, Students that come out of our program will have a good baseline skill knowledge of anatomy and, and the body and illnesses and diseases and exercise. Our alumni go into nursing. Our alumni go into exercise, physical therapy, radiology. So it is a very good um, foundation to build upon. Mm -hmm. I think one of the big differences that I've noticed between SES and health science is they focus a lot mostly on just getting your STNA and being more medical towards doctors and all that versus SES, you can still get that. If you wanted to, you could become an STNA in the end anyways, or you could go in like 15 different directions career-wise. Because I know, do you guys do like collaborations with health science, like adopt a road and mm -hmm. all we that? Do. We do. Um, we are part of HOSA, which is Fu Future Healthcare Occupations of America. We're one of the longest, largest CTS on campus, our student organizations. Um, we do community involvement, which is our adopter road. We do blood drives and things like that. Uh, so we do things, some with health science, um, but that is mainly what we do. But then we also collaborate with other labs 
and I'll turn it over to Dre because she can speak on behalf of that, like things that we do with cause and what we actually do with our firefighters on campus. Yeah, definitely. So I know you guys, sorry to interrupt, You're but <laughs> you guys do, because we had fire kids on the show for our mm -hmm. first episode and they talked about a place called Fast. Yep. Do you guys go with them every Tuesday with them? Mm -hmm. We go every Tuesday and what we do basically is because they're in the firefighter career tech, what we do is we train them as they would as a firefighter. So we go and we run them through all the steps that they would be, like be going through. Like we have them put their gear on and do all the heavy mm -hmm. workouts in that. But we have them <laughs> practice in situations where they would have to squeeze through a space. Uh, one of the ones mm -hmm. that we have is the blind crawl where they can't see, but they're crawling on all fours and they're trying to get to the end of this rope. And we train them to be able to do the exact firefighter mild test, which would put them into the firefighter so course. So basically you're mm -hmm. just training them like what you would do for a job, mm -hmm. kind of. Well, and that and also some of them are not going to be firefighters, but we still have to train them. And so we help them get their personal physical goals. Because don't they go... Because I know one of your students goes there to the fire kids for EMT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, does she just stay Maddie. there the whole year, or does mm -hmm. she come back to your guys's? It's a it's back and forth, and again, a unique situation in our program because our program is so diverse in our background. Um, she does go over to um, EMT. She is a sports exercise science student. She came into our program already with an STNA, so as a sophomore. Wow. Um, because of COVID and the things that happened, society and our healthcare environment needed a lot of healthcare workers. So they dropped age requirements and things such as that f to get young professionals in because we needed manpower. And Maddie got that. So she came in as a junior with her STNA. Then when we started training the firefighters, she was looking at that and talking with that instructor, and she w really wanted to be a, a nurse working in trauma like ED in the emergency department. So then we found out that, hey, if she got her EMT, that would allow her to do clinicals through the emergency room department. So then we started collaborating with that instructor, and then we said, hey, what could we do? So she decided to go into EMT this first semester. She's getting ready to take her, her boards next week. And that opens up all sorts of career opportunities. She'll still come back into our program and get her physical therapy aid certification. But the, again, what's so great about Apollo is we try and fit a program to that student and we can sort of individualize here and there to make Apollo the best fit for that student to allow them to come out of this program with a lot of different certifications to be next ready. Because we, so basically our lab, we can go take pictures of any lab. Yeah. And anytime we go into like that lab, I always see her in there, and I'm always just, like, <laughs> curious on why there's only one sports kid in there with all that's these, like, fire people and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that's actually pretty cool that she got her STNA at, like, her sophomore year. Yes. yes. Wouldn't that be pretty hard to get, like, at a young age? Um, some skilled nursing facilities, and, again, outside of Apollo, if you go and you work there and stuff, sometimes they'll pay for that certification, but I actually had recently a junior in our SES1 class that on his own went through our adult ed and got his STNA and recently oh, wow. got his, um, his actual certification and he, uh, we're very proud of him. So again, a student finding out how Apollo can work for him and went out there and, and sought an opportunity and took advantage of it. That's pretty cool because when I came here, I was a sophomore, and I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to do what my dad did, mm -hmm. and, like, I knew this program was right for me, and so now I work with him, cool. and then he knows all these other people, and so I help out with those people. Like, I'm working weddings and stuff and sports, so I kind of, I don't know, like, know what I want to be and stuff, and that's cool that, like, you, you guys know what you want to be when you come to Apollo. Like, mm -hmm. you're dead set on your next, like, be next ready like you're ready for the next chapter in your life mm -hmm. kind of so so the next question I had was like so as us our program does skills USA mm -hmm. and you guys we're going up to state and I know you guys are in HOSA we are so is it different than skills like kind of from what I understand, I've never been a part of skills, um, but in talking with, like we 
just brought up Maddie. Maddie competed in HOSA and in skills, so it was a little bit different, and I haven't been able to talk to her yet to see how it was. It differed. But my understanding is we chose to go to HOSA because it really deals with health care and exercise science where skill is more um, like construction, automotive, that type of technical automation. It wasn't as in-depth as exercise, wellness, and health care. So we were very limited in getting our students the opportunity to compete because you can only put so many people in mm -hmm. leadership or individual competitions. So that's why we had switched to HOSA. Because Austin, just one re like what what did you get, Austin, second or third? Second. Nice. Second for skills. Thank you. And then we saw that HOSA had some a couple. Did you have any qualifiers for state for HOSA? We did, and Dre's Dre? team did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so Dre. Dre, talk a little bit about your uh, program um, and then. So what we did for HOSA was a, a PSA. We did a PSA about mental health, which even though it's mental, it's still a big part of the health field. And so what we did was we made a public service announcement, announcement video. It was about 25 seconds long. And we displayed how mental health is one of those things that mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult to talk about. It is. Mm -hmm. And so when we took that to regionals and then we discussed on it, we actually ended up winning first place. So <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. True. We, True. So we, right. we have three people, well, a couple more, but we have three topics that are going to state for our lab. We have Austin is doing photography and then we have someone in advertising design mm -hmm. and then me and two other people are going to do promotional boarding like promotional bulletin board okay talking yeah. about like a theme and it, it's kind of nerve-wracking because we didn't even go to my group didn't go to regionals we just advanced to state so mm -hmm. we're kind oh, of, yeah. we're kind sort of, of nervous. like going like ah! cold turkey huh because we had two weeks to get it ready and we were reading the rubric and then it said already going to state and we're like oh okay Great. we have like two months Great. now to plan this while well, austin what were you stressing it was chaos it was <laughs> it was really bad um so basically we got there and someone in our class uh the advertising design student uh couldn't get their computer to connect to the internet which you know we need mm -hmm. um that and probably like 200 plus people making all this noise just got hectic and uh our it department had to go into the computer remotely and uh, get rid of all the firewall and stuff like that so now that computer is like like no one else can use it because it just it doesn't have any safety on it but um my experience was fine for the most part um it was still pretty hectic but I took a written test, and then I had a field assignment. So I'd take pictures of things with contrast, and that was all they gave me. They gave me, and I got second somehow. Nice. Yeah. Nice. yeah um, we have scoring rubrics just like you have, and certain things that we have to do. We have leadership and then individual. Um, we have knowledge-based tests and a product such as a PSA. Um, we are taking, in our program, we're taking 25 uh, 25 of our wow. sports exercise science students advanced to state, um, anywhere from PSA to creative problem solving. Um, uh, help me out, Dre. Biomedical debate. Biomedical debate, physical therapy skills, sports medicine, public speaking, um, career display. Career display. That's yeah. yeah that's one yeah. of them. So we have some teams like uh, Dre's part of a team, but then we also have individual events which is physical therapy and sports medicine skills. Yeah, because there's not like I'm guessing there's not a lot of competition in our field, so we only can take certain amount of mm -hmm. I'm guessing us. Yeah. And we're only like because this is our teacher's first year, he wants our seniors to like kind of get into it and then maybe next year let the juniors do mm -hmm. it that's what I'm guessing because he he doesn't know skills he didn't he doesn't know HOSA he's mm -hmm. brand new to all this stuff mm -hmm. and I'm kind of like brand new to it too because last year we didn't really get to experience like mm -hmm. what you guys do because did you go to HOSA last year last year I did not you did not mm -mm. no Last year we did we did well in both our programs with health science and us and uh, sports exercise science. We actually had teams made international. 
Oh, um, wow. Uh, Nigeria wow. Lloyd, who graduated last year, who's now in physical therapy AIDS school, she actually got gold. That man in physical therapy school, she was number one in the state of Ohio. Wow. And she got to go to Nashville last year. And uh, Reese Taviano, as a junior last year, got second, uh, actually advanced to international in healthcare photography. She ended up um, in the top 25 in the world. Um, again, when you go there, and I say in the world, when you go to international competition, you're competing against people from all around the world. Uh, we had people from Canada, uh, Taiwan, Mexico, um, Hawaii. Uh, when we went there, there were close to 13,000 competitors oh, wow. at international. So I got to experience international last year. Uh, we hope that we get to take more students. That means but, you got to do good, Dre. <laughs> I'm going to try. Um, <laughs> But again, uh, our program is only so good as what our students buy into and what they do. Um, mm -hmm. I always tell, and Dre will attest to this, um, I'm very blessed to be able to work with students that are passionate about their craft, that are willing to donate their time, that are really willing to step outside of their comfort zone. Like what you said, you got there and you're like, oh my gosh, this isn't working, what do I do? You know, how to create on the fly, how to problem solve, how to talk to people. Um, how to leave these walls and go somewhere else to another school or something like that. Yeah. I think that's just amazing. Yeah, because I know stepping out of your comfort zone for your lab, we kind of had to step <laughs> out of our comfort zone when we did that collab back in October with yeah. the Monster Mash. So you guys step out of your comfort zone, I'm guessing, a lot with all these <laughs> like collaborations because I know you guys, Dre, you actually collabed with us for HOSA with your video. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we hope to get to state kind of <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> partnership and stuff. Right. So what other collabs? Going into like our next couple questions, what collabs like did you do with other labs? Like I know you did Cause and Us. Mm -hmm. Um, we actually we started our collabs our first year yes. when I, when we were juniors. We went with cl uh, the Cause Lab and we taught them about carpal tunnel and then they gave us massages. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um. We also did a collab where we had this, what was it, like a dice with the exercise on it, and we wanted to make a replica of this exercise ball, basically. And so we went to, which lab was that, and had them basically print out. Was it robotics? Build. Yep. Robotics. Yes. We had they have them. they the 3D. Mm -hmm. They yeah. 3D printed an entire replica of this. And so we collab with them. We collab with Cause. We collab with MT, actually a lot more than we thought we would yeah so. yeah because last year we never really collabed until this year with the like the monster mash video mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which i was supposed to be a part of that helping and sadly i got sick that oh, day sorry so i didn't really see the. i saw the like craziness of like having all these cause students it was insane yeah. coming into that <laughs> yeah. small room i remember yeah, the. <laughs> i remember the next day austin was like telling me and i was like oh i'm so sorry for getting sick the popcorn <laughs> like, was good though the oh, popcorn thank was good thank you I was, so. I was in charge of popcorn. <laughs> it was good. That's good. Was good. Like, yeah. I was watching these videos back because we all had to edit one video, and I was just like, there's so many people in this tiny little room, right. mm -hmm. and you're trying to get them to, like, dance while there's cameras trying to record and people are walking through it. That's I feel like that's the hard part in our field is when we're trying to, like, film something. Like, with you guys, we had, like, problems with, people sitting in front of the camera, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. walking in front of the camera, like trying to get those angles. Like we had, I know you had the gimbal and you wanted to get these perfect angles and people just kept like yeah. walking and there was no walking space because you try and not get in front of the other cameras, which yeah. I mean, it still turned out really good. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm proud of what we did, <laughs> even though I wasn't there for it, yeah. but I don't, it's just something. It was something, yeah, but, I mean, we did it, and it turned out good. That's all we could ask for, really, I mean. But, again, you think about it, if you're shooting something live and you can't do crowd control, you're going to have a photo bomber. I mean, you for know, sure. what are you going to do about that person or that sound or that, you know, something happens where um, there was a lot of activity in that room, and you did. You had to go and change things, and I'm sure the acoustics was terrible <laughs> in that area, <laughs> right? Between all that, like, we did sound checks right now, and, we're, you know, I that I couldn't imagine. Like and then one of your cameras, you guys just got new equipment for that, too, yeah. didn't you? Where yeah. you had to switch with some foot thing, and 
I, oh, it yeah. was I think it was chaotic even though I wasn't there because I had like the list of stuff to do and Ernest always like thanks me for that list because <laughs> I had like where everybody should be what you what camera you need to use like what you have to do and then all of a sudden I just got sick I was like sitting in math class mm. a period before doing this and I just had to go home and I was like I felt so bad <laughs> I was like texting I think I was texting Austin I was like I feel so bad for leaving you guys out of this like I'm just like because I was in charge of everything and like I, I was helping you guys plan this and it kind of just went all like haywire so <laughs> and I mean it's what happens yeah but did you have your staff help yeah. pick you up and yeah. they were able to you know when you're organized and you're thorough, we're, and we always talk about in our thing, work has to continue if you can't be there. And mm-hmm. I mentioned our classroom being run like a business. It doesn't matter if Dre is supposed to be head of marketing and she's gone. Somebody else has to step up, Yeah. right? It doesn't matter if when we collaborate with our firefighters and if you were, the, you were her client and um, now all of a sudden... Um, there was someone she didn't just have you she had four others and she could only do her job as well as somebody else's documented on what needed to happen for that client today so in any craft is the more organized as you are and you're prepared and advanced and you got your work done before the you know the next day that is huge yeah you can ask Austin. I did like a <laughs> spreadsheet because I work weddings and so we're really organized with my dad. And so I kind of like took that a part of me and did a mm-hmm. spreadsheet for like the Monster Mash collab. And so Ernest says he's like, they all say that they were thankful for like the spreadsheet because it made <laughs> sense and helpful. And like yeah. sometimes like weddings are yeah. even chaotic for me because the weather might not turn out perfect because we had like, I think it was a wedding in Salina and all of a sudden it started pouring down raining and we had to run inside and (laughs) like we wanted these beautiful action shots and then we just had to continue what it is Mm -hmm. and stuff. So I think it's kind of, it's what you have to deal with. And I'm kind of glad that we fixed everything up and stuff. It's just, I'm guessing the way of life. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Go with the flow. So, (laughs) Here's one question. Dre, you were talking about me to me about this when um, we were scheduling this podcast. You said something about fitness well buddies. What is that and what do you guys do? Fitness wellness buddies. So that's more of a junior year thing. Um, what it is basically is it gets us into the idea of being held accountable for our nutrition and our wellness physically because you can make a plan all you want and not actually do it. And so what mm-hmm. this was, was we took our classmates and we had to show them what we ate, what we did. And they'd be like, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. You need to fix that. And then we would work out three days a week. Mm-hmm. And our goal was basically get your vitamins up, get your sodium up, get your nutrition up, increase your hydration, you know, do this, don't do that. A lot of that. And it was just like watching me and my classmates get in a better mood because we were forced to eat better and that gave us more energy and we're like wow that actually works and that's what we did a lot of just documented nutrition and then studying that nutrition we were documenting Mm -hmm. that seems nice that's cool yeah so again learning the finding value in what you're learning and uh, fitness wellness buddy is one of those things about how do you motivate how do you motivate self Um, looking at what you're doing and setting goals and finding out that if you do set goals and you have those goals written down and they're smart goals and you have a buddy that when I don't feel like working out or hey I'll fill your water bottle up for you you know (laughs) collaborating again like we said you're having someone in your corner to help you out and then uh, having each other accountable that's what a fitness wellness buddy should be um, getting us out there and, and paying attention to the details along with us. So that's what it is. And we do it all second semester, their senior year, but now they get to carry that over with their firefighters. So their clients, so Dre's, uh, firefighter, um, her senior year, same thing, had to go to that client and say, Hey, what are your smart goals? What are your fitness goals? Um, how's your hydration? Are you eating well? And just as if she was a personal trainer or a physical therapist or a chiropractor, that part of you 
is huge. You have to know about your own, what you take in and what you eat and how that affects your every day. And again, another way for our students to learn and then actually use that with a client to actually put it to work. Yeah, because I don't know if you do this with your homeschool, but my homeschool with my, like, I used to swim. Well, I just finished my swim season and everything. My coach made us kind of do that, Mm -hmm. like track down your goals. Like my goal was to make like podium for WBL and stuff. And so she got me to like checked in on me, seeing how I was doing Mm -hmm. and everything. And then in the end, I achieved that goal. And I'm actually really proud of that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I was like really shocked. I was like, this is not happening. (laughs) (laughs) This is my senior year and this cannot be happening right right. now. But do you do it? Uh, yeah, we did it in the preseason. Uh, we go through a whole bunch of steps. Like we start, we actually, since I'm a senior, I won't be playing next year, but we start training now, uh, to get ready for the fall season in soccer. Um, but yeah, we have, uh, steps where we do indoor futsal and then, uh, we lift, uh, I forget how many times a week. I think twice, maybe three. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we go watch film of last year's games and see what we can improve on, see what we can do better. And then on the first film session, we wa- we not watch, we write down all of our goals this year. Um, and this year we wanted to win the WBL four years in a row, which we did. Yeah. Um, we wanted to uh, beat our rivals, Lexington, which we did twice. <laughs> Um, we wanted to make it to the state championship, which we did. Yep. And we wanted to win state, which we did. Yeah. Was it a shootout? I forget. Yeah, it was a shootout. Um, we won three to one. Um, I wish I could show you you all the clip, but, (laughs) uh, one of my good friends, his name is Caleb, probably saved us the game. I don't know if you guys saw it, but, uh, they were going to score, like, it was an open goal. They were going to score. And then he just slides in and then just knocks it right off the goal line. And it was so cool. <laughs> yeah. It was so cool. Um, but now I, ha- now I have a ring. Now I have a state championship ring. And yeah. I got a bunch of presents. I got a, a nice coat. Uh, I got a state championship towel from OHSAA. And just all these, like – other stuff that I can't even remember yeah. all. Like yeah, the lasting season. memories, right? Yeah. You know, that towel eventually you may lose, but the memories that you have with your teammates and the things that you knew what it take to became a, become a state champion. Yeah. That work ethic, that commitment, that oh, yeah. setting of goals. Yeah, um, it was Overcoming adversity, relying on a teammate. Um, that's huge. Yeah, it was very hard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It was very hard because we, especially towards – the end of the season uh tournament time you know it gets cold muscles start mm-hmm. cramping um so we had a lot of uh our star players or our starter players uh not out with injuries but you know having some issues with mm-hmm. a knee a calf uh whatever it bothered them at the moment i actually um i had a knot the size of like that like a quarter in my back and I just couldn't – I couldn't practice for, like, three days because it just hurt so bad. Um, but, yeah, we just had – we had a bunch of bumps during the way, definitely. But we're here. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. with swim, it's kind of different with soccer. You use every muscle, basically, in your body. <laughs> and by the end of th- – I was out the week before WBLs with a knee injury because I pushed off the wall funky. Ooh. And it just kind of, like – I don't know, it felt like pull – Mm -hmm. So I had to sit out for a week, and I started taper, which is, like, you go slower and slower to make you go faster. And then I don't know where I just swim really fast (laughs) and do stuff, like, Mm -hmm. and I got podium. And our preseason, what we do, we grew up, we me and my team grew up for, like, years with each other. I've been with these same people for 10 years. And what we do is preseason, we join summer swim Mm -hmm. for the, like, first 10 weeks of the summer and then you're done and then we do lifting and we start doing our goals and then season comes and we do like this thing called hell week where all we do is hard sets that hurt so much but in the end it's 
good for you. Mm-hmm. Like you get better times, better like abilities and stuff. And so I just think, I think fitness wellness buddies are kind of cool and it helps you get motivated because being on a team for 10 years and them motivating me for 10 years actually achieved my goal for the last couple seasons with them. Mm-hmm. It's really sad to see it end. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. So this month, February, is mm-hmm. Heart Health Month. And it, one of the questions is, what is the basic, like, simple way to keep your heart healthy as a teenager? Like, us, the, the young generation, healthy. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, like you, you're a swimmer, soccer player, and things like that. Us who are athletic, it's easy. Just move, right? I think the hard part is motivating those individuals who don't just move. And I always say we have all sorts of apps. We have the smartwatch. We have our cell phones. Uh, Just tracking our steps. Everybody should be encouraged to get at least 10,000 steps per day. So I would make it manageable and just say, let's just start there. Okay, we have reminders. I have a little thing on my phone that just, you know, bing, you know, every hour on the hour, get up and move. I think that's the thing is just looking at where you're at, what is your baseline, and just move more than you did yesterday. And put one foot in front of the other and do a little bit more each day. Um, But that's what I see, and I see youth and things like that. We become more sedentary because of the things that things just get in the way. You know, um, a lot of us have to work. We come to school, we go to work, and then we're so tired, you know, I just want to go home and sit and veg, right? (laughs) Or our downtime is um, it's not going outside this time of year in Ohio. It's not going out and riding a bike or shooting hoops or playing tennis. It's let's stay inside it and maybe play a video game or something like that. And nothing against a video game. But instead of just sitting there, maybe a video game that gets you up and move. So that heart health that I find out just in teenagers is getting them active again, Um, finding the kid in them again, you know, Um, just that creative play, getting up and doing something different. Hey, go bowling, something. But I always go back to make it a smart goal and realistic for you and uh, maybe just move a little bit more. Yeah, like we sit for our lab, we sit every single day <laughs> so at like one thirty-five every day we would get up and start moving because you can't stare at your screen for so mm. long mm-hmm. and stuff and you guys are moving what maybe every day in lab we I'd try at least we do day. yeah mm-hmm. but we can't because our stuff is at, on a computer so at least every day we do five minutes of sc- like signing off no computer mm-hmm. go walk in the hallway go somewhere else like just to get our mind back and like not have hurt legs for sitting <laughs> right. down and stuff so, or back yeah, yeah so. my I had to have Austin crack my back once because <laughs> it was it it sucks sitting in the chair all day like mm-hmm. just trying to do schoolwork because you're in you're in academics for so long sitting down doing nothing and then you're in lab and you could like you're in, like you guys are moving in lab all the time. Construction's moving in lab all the time, mm-hmm. but some labs just sit there, and you have to stare at it like a screen, or like you can't really get up and move. So mm-hmm. we try our best to try and get out of our chairs and stuff and right. walk around, kind of. Well, I've even said to Mr. Ernest that if you do expand your program, is get ergonomic workstations. You know, and sometimes maybe having a monitor up high and you're standing and you're not sitting. Yeah, he has a monitor Um, like that. Yeah, he has. Even doing some things instead of your chair, getting a physio ball, that it's a ball that you sit on, that you can bounce on or you can move on and that it engages your core. So (laughs) there are some things that you can do and um, there's all sorts of neat ergonomic type things. They now have uh, treadmills that actually go into a workstation that you could just be walking. I saw that, yeah, yeah, Yeah. with your feet, yeah. Right, Um, and the same thing. I think that we could probably even be more productive in work that, like you said, at a certain time at 1.30 or whatever, you get up and you move. But even in our academic classrooms, being a, yeah, you go from one class to the next when the bell rings. But, but that's like five minutes. Yeah, but right. five minutes. But again, trying to you know not necessarily be creative in how we learn and not necessarily sit there. Is there something we can get up and move as we do? You know, 
um, move here, move there? Is there something that we can do in math class or, you know, I know Mrs. Roll sometimes does a map. Well, hey, let's do a map around campus and see if you can do north, south, east, west, or f a scavenger hunt for, I don't know, s Civil War replicas. I don't know. But again, again, just get moving. Mm -hmm. Somehow, yeah. some way, I think we'd all be more, a little more productive and happy. What we did, me and Dre are in like the same math class, mm -hmm. and so we did this thing where what was it like motion, detecting your motion, where you walk around mm -hmm. and stuff and mm -hmm. ca calculate that. Like we've probably been sitting in the room for two weeks, not doing anything, and then now he wants us to get around and start moving, and I think that's more fun than sitting and taking notes mm -hmm. at right. like a boring desk like <laughs> I just want to get like I'm just too I have ADHD and I struggle to stay focused so I have to go get up and do something or I have to do something else than like try it's hard to try and stay focused for a lot of stuff because mm -hmm. so. you got to be able to move <laughs> yeah I can't I That's have to move I really don't like about schools is they force kids to sit still all day long and then they're like why do you have so much energy you know why are you so ambitious I haven't had the chance to move all day I've been sitting my butt hurts my back hurts I want to move <laughs> like you can't yeah. yell at me for that yeah or it's different your junior year you were moving like in you had right. lab first and then you go to academics right and so like, it was probably better but again like you said if you're because I used to be tired at the end of the day last year because we did all this stuff in the morning. And now mm -hmm. this year I have, like, so much energy in the afternoon and then I'm, like, so tired in the morning during class. Right. Like, I need to do something. Here. <laughs> that was me. That was really <laughs> me. Like, I was just drained at the end of every day last year and now I have, like, just so much energy, you know. Um, uh, I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> great i want to go back to that heart health thing though definitely a lot of it has to do with movement but another thing is a lot of the kids they want to stick with the trends mm -hmm. and so they're doing things that just purposely are not healthy for them yeah. uh, um yeah. or yeah. you know early morning schools these kids are going to mcdonald's and they're getting four shots of espresso in their caffeine <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's like you're gonna have a heart attack that's and die. so yeah. true that's so true we had one of my friends she took four shots <laughs> she couldn't breathe she there was yeah. it was just so effective that she couldn't breathe and now you've got kids who drink red bull monsters i worked with a girl who drank only monsters it was insane and she was like oh i've got a stomach ulcer my heart hurts i've got palpitations <laughs> i'm like well, you know yeah <laughs> but you know the caffeine drinks and the nicotine and all the stuff just to stick with the trends as yeah. a teenager yeah like i'll have maybe a dr pepper maybe what maybe once a week maybe but I won't be like that person I have to drink. I usually drink Gatorade or water. Mm -hmm. That's all I would drink for a week. And then like Fridays, because it's like the weekend, I'll have maybe a soda for fun or something. When I was younger, I used to drink lots of caffeine. I guess that was just the thing you did when you were a kid. And then eventually it started to hurt my stomach, so I stopped. And I literally cannot drink any type of carbonated drink without getting sick anymore. Like all the sugar and the carbonation and just, I can't do it. Uh, a monster would probably kill me. <laughs> I think so. So mm -hmm. it's just, yeah. it's crazy to me that people are like so avidly drinking all these intense, unhealthy drinks. And then they're like, I am not healthy. <laughs> yeah. And they say like, they don't feel well. And I'm like, well, you well. just like chugged a Red Bull or like a monster and stuff. Right. Like, and some of, of them, them feel like they're really forced to drink that stuff too, just to get through a day. And it's like that. I feel like our kids shouldn't feel like that. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I agree. I agree. I think I'd rather be healthy than drink, like, chug a Red Bull or something. Well, and they don't have to drink Red Bulls or Monsters. Yeah. There's other drinks that they could drink in the morning. A protein shake, you know, something that isn't so bad for you that it makes you hurt halfway through the day, you know. There's yeah. things for you. I drink Gatorade once in a while in the mornings. Like, I'll get up maybe to take my meds. I take Gatorade. A Gatorade's mm -hmm. not bad for you yeah. at all. I used to, or, like, orange juice, I would drink that every morning too. Mm -hmm. But now I don't like the taste. I don't know why. I just don't like it. <laughs> Palate change. Yeah. They say that happens with age. Right. <laughs> I don't like it anymore. I'll just <laughs> stick with my Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> so lastly, before we end, we have Austin with current events. Okay. So have you guys heard of uh, Damar Hamlin? No, all of yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, you all heard what happened with mm -hmm. his heart. 
uh, what do you what do you think about that? What do you what are your thoughts about his, his <laughs> was, cardiac arrest? Was crazy. I was watching the game live, and as a trained athletic trainer, the first thing I do is I'm looking at body posture. So I see everything happen, and then they replay. And the first thing that goes into my mind, under the trained professional eye, when he got hit and then he stood up, I knew that it. One of three things. It wasn't a concussion because of what I saw. I thought it was either exactly what happened, a blow to the chest that caused an arrhythmia, and he wasn't going to go into cardiac arrest, or because he wrapped up right underneath your clavicle, there's a subclavian artery, that it could have severed that because he could have had a fracture that would cause sort of the same thing. Mm. Um, but then as you know, you're know, you watching and things like that, um, it's very, very uncommon for any type of cardiac event to happen in sport. Typically, as an athletic trainer, we always worry about it, but it's more the spectator or the coaches when there's a cardiac event. But for actually for that to happen to um, a professional athlete is very, very, very rare. Yeah. Very rare. Um, I saw some about how it, like he got hit. Uh, the split second, his heart was doing something. I don't know what it was. Yep. And that's what made him go into cardiac arrest. Yes. Like, it was like a split second. Yeah, so your heart's electrical path is very specific. And um, for that blow to happen at such a velocity and force at a certain time within that cycle had to happen. And then, again, the odds of that happening, very, very, very rare. Yeah. Um but I'm everything turned out great. You know, yeah. he you had an athletic trainer and you had healthcare staff that knew what was going on and started CPR and we had the AED and they did everything that they were supposed to do. Um, without that and without that training and those healthcare workers there, the outcome of his survival um, probably wouldn't have been as positive as it was. He did survive. The the likelihood of him coming back into the NFL is going to happen. Um, but again, having trained pr professionals there, um, they practice every single day on what may or may not happen in those situations. And they responded in the right way and they got favorable outcomes because of what they did. Yeah. Um, this says apparently he had surgery on his heart. Uh, this is from NBC. I got to find it. Hold on. Uh, right here. Maybe. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know. But he had heart surgery at Ohio State Wexner Medical Center. And, um, yeah, here's the, um, electric thing you were talking about in the heart. Mm -hmm. It says... Every time the heart beats, there is a tiny moment less than a fifth of a second that makes it vulnerable to force of a projectile such as a hockey puck or a baseball that can lead to a chaotic, potentially de deadly heart rhythm. Yes. So that must have uh, what, uh, caused it, uh, his yes. cardiac arrest. Um, but uh, we're just going to go to the next one. Uh Physical therapy rehab uh, cer certification limit. What What is a physical therapist rehab certification, first of all? Um, that is our industry credential. It's physical therapy aid certification. So what that is, our students, Dre, soon, will be taking a 50-question multiple choice knowledge-based test on the practice of phys being a physical therapy aid. Part of the that is knowing medical terminology, um, infection control, how to help a patient in a uh, or a PT or a PTA, like a physical therapist and a physical therapy assistant, um, registering patients, uh, ambulating patients with walkers, gait training, gait belts, um, moving a patient that may be in a wheelchair into. Um, a chair to eat or get into a tub to shower. So a physical therapy aid 
would work in a physical therapy clinic or a rehab clinic where that could be in a hospital, it could be in an outpatient, it could be in a nursing home, could be in a home, and they would work under the direction of a physical therapist. Um, and they just, they're almost like a wingman for that team. Um, Dre would be able to answer phones and register patients, but she would work and be a part of that team of those physical therapists rehabbing and working under the care of that doctor's orders. So um, there are opportunities for physical therapy aides in this area, um, and we're seeing a lot of uh, alumni, like right now, already working with sole proprietor physical therapists, That meaning sole proprietor, that I'm a physical therapist that own my own business. So um, that's what a physical therapy aid is, and uh, we're looking forward to getting Dre and other seniors certified so they can get out there and putting their applications in to be hired. I actually just put an application in for a physical therapy aid uh, or physical therapy assistant in um, St. Rita's the other day. Well, there right. you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, I forget what I was going to ask. Oh, uh, so with the certification, is there like a field assignment with that? Or is it just the multiple choice test? Um, it's just a multiple choice test, but some of the skills I do internally to make sure they have that knowledge, they do have skill tests. So like last week, Dre had to be skill test out on how to fit a walker, how to ambulate someone with a walker. Um, they learn how to fit someone with crutches, how to do all the gates on a crutch. Most people think that, oh, well, what is it? And if you can't weight bear on one, what is it called? Um how to position a patient, uh, how to do therapeutic modalities like heat, cold, ultrasound, e-stem, um, how to exercise a client, how to get them on, safely on a bike, off of a bike, onto a treadmill, um, how to strengthen, how to work on flexibility, how to do range of motion right after someone has had a surgery or something. So I mentioned exercise science is very broad. She has prepared for this physical therapy aid certification since day one. Uh, the terminology, what goes into it, how to interact with a client, how to make sure the area is safe. So the field testing has been happening since she walked into the door into yeah. this program. Dre, would you say that is hard? Like all of that stuff is hard? I wouldn't say it's hard. It's definitely one of those things that it's going to get drilled into your head. Because... Um, <laughs> I mean, I could ace that test with 100%, but if I don't learn any of the skills, like if she hasn't been teaching mm -hmm. us and skill checking us out on those skills, I'd still be useless in the workplace. Versus mm -hmm. if I barely squeak by, if I know physically how to do those skills, I'd still be better in the workplace. So we, almost every day, I mean, I just did skill checks out on Walker. You know, I had to figure out which side of the patient I'd have to stand on. You learn sanitization, you learn... Uh, clarity of documentation and all that stuff it's very very important and so she drills that into our head every single day <laughs> it's like a business you know it's like it a business it yeah. is yeah it is it is well functioning one mm -hmm. um, she really does her best to try to make sure that even though we take this test we do good on the test but we do good in the workplace too right um so this says that applicants must have evidence of a 2,000 hours of direct patient care is that true to be a united states physical therapist to be a physical therapist oh whew. to be a physical therapist you actually have to have a doctorate degree oh um so yeah it, physical therapy is a doctorate degree if you come out with a physical therapy assistant which is a pta that's an associate plus um our students are just getting a certification so it's just basic knowledge. Um, if she wanted to be a physical therapy assistant, she would have to go through a two-year college beyond high school. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, the more education you have, PTs have a doctorate plus. So it is a lot, a lot of education. Mm -hmm. Just like I'm an athletic mm -hmm. trainer, now in athletic training, you, it's a five-year degree. You have to have a master's degree to be an athletic trainer which is different than a personal trainer. A personal trainer, Dre could sit for a certification exam after she gets her high school diploma for American Council on Exercise and be a personal trainer. A personal trainer is different than an athletic trainer. An athletic yeah. trainer is a highly educated healthcare professional, like what you saw on Monday Night Football with um, that Buffalo football player that went into cardiac arrest. 
those athletic trainers are working with orthopedists, neurologists, chiropractors. I mean, they're right. They're working with EMTs. They're highly skilled, highly trained. A personal trainer is highly skilled and highly trained, but they work with more on just exercise. Mm -hmm. They don't get all of the medical and advanced medical training that an athletic trainer does. So they don't work with, like, like you said, neurologists, chiropractors, and whatnot. The personal trainers don't do that. Um, they may eventually. So uh, let's. I'll give you a scenario. Dre decides, and she gets certified as a personal trainer. She may see a client later on that may have had a total knee or a low back pain or may have worked with you that you're released and you just want to get general fitness done, that you just want to get back in shape. Um, as long as the doctor clears you that you can start personal training, she could work with you. Yeah. But if there was any contraindications that it was above and beyond what she sh could do as a personal trainer, she wouldn't be able to see you. She would say, you know what, I really think you need to go back to your family doctor for this, or you need to go back to, a f you need to go and see a physical therapist for this. That's knowing what is called scope of practice. Mm -hmm. So knowing your scope, knowing what your limitations are. Um, and another question for the certification, like mm -hmm. what, because uh, you said it's a very, SES is a very broad thing. So can that uh, certification only go towards physical therapy or can it go towards, like you said, athletic training, personal trainer, mm -hmm. um, you know, even maybe a chiropractor or a doctor, you said radiologist, like, mm -hmm. so that certification can go towards all of those things. Yes. Yes. Um, like I said, our alumni, I have alumni that are radiologists. I have alumni that are physician assistants. I have alumni that are ath that are going into athletic training that are pre-med. Exercise science is very broad. We skim the surface of all of different things, and then it's you get some basic certifications. You sort of just like you know what you want to do, right? And you probably may hopefully know what you want to do. Um, it allows you to sort of uh, springboard off into other disciplines and professions. Yeah, right. It, it actually puts you way ahead of someone just coming out of high school versus mm -hmm. someone that comes out of exercise science career tech. Um, you all and your what you're doing here, you're going to be so much further ahead. Probably even someone coming out of an associates or something like this, just a general multimedia marketing person that's book well book ready, you know, well knowledgeable like that, but doesn't have the hands on skills. Yeah. Okay, and that's. That's huge. Being able to have the hands-on skills. Yeah. That, that's why I came here. Probably maybe be the only one who knows, like, what Photoshop is, like, how to do that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. How to do that. Exactly. Because like, your freshman year at this college I'm going to, you have to take, like, an Adobe, like, the programs we do here. And you have to you take a have beginner's it. class, and I'll probably be <laughs> teaching <ahead>. it. <laughs> I'll be ahead of everybody. Everybody's yes. Like, so, like, it's kind of, like cool in a way that you right. know all this stuff so you don't get lost in like the class sure mm -hmm. sure yeah exactly exactly so thank you guys for coming on to the show thank you for talking about SES and what you guys do and that's it basically thank you thanks for having us thank it's you. been fun yep, yep. <laughs> thank you thanks <laughs>